In this video, we're going to establish a list of rules for taking derivatives. You'll be happy to know that we will not be using the limit definition all semester. You're still responsible for it, it'll show up on exams, but you will also be responsible for these shorthand rules for taking derivatives. Let's go through them one by one. The first rule is that the derivative of a constant is zero. The graph of a constant function is just a straight line. Now, because the function is constant, any x value you have when you plug it into the function Function, the height of the function is c, so f of x is c, and f of a is also c. As you know, c minus c is equal to zero, and this is before we ever take the limit. Zero divided by x minus a is just equal to zero, so we're taking the limit of a constant. There's no x's in this quantity, and the resulting value is zero for the limit. No matter what your x value is, the derivative is zero. The tangent line is horizontal in this case. The next rule is the power rule. Here's what the power rule says. If I have a function, like x raised to a power p, then the derivative of that function is obtained by taking the p, putting the p down in front, and then reducing the power p by 1. I'm going to show you the proof in the special case where the power here is an integer. Now my function is x to the n power, so f of x is x to the n, and f of a is a to the n. If we were to evaluate this limit as x approaches a, the denominator approaches 0, and the numerator approaches 0, we get an undefined quantity. Of course, we know from previous videos how to deal with undefined quantities, which is that we need to find some algebra that we can do on this expression. You may remember from algebra class that the numerator x to the n minus a to the n can be factored. x minus a is a factor of this polynomial in the numerator, and here's the formula for that. Of course, the great thing about this is that x minus a will cancel with x minus a. So here's what we obtain after the cancellation. Now, if you count them up, there are n terms which appear in this expression, and we're taking the limit as x approaches a. This is a polynomial, so we can actually just plug in a everywhere we see an x because polynomials are continuous everywhere. Now this will become a to the n minus 1. Let's look at the next term, a to the n minus 2, and then multiplied times another a. In total, that's also a to the n minus 1. If you do that for all the other terms, it turns out that every single one of these terms gives you an a to the n minus 1 power, and there's n terms total. So our final answer is that there's n a to the n minus 1 terms, and there you go. That's the proof of the power rule. So using the a notation, the derivative is n a to the n minus 1. If you wanted to use x notation, the derivative is n x to the n minus 1. And we also have this alternate notation where ddx just means take the derivative of x to the n power, and you obtain n x to the n minus 1. The next rules that we're going to establish is that derivatives are linear. If you Remember from properties of limits, limits are also linear, and if you look back to the previous video, you'll see the analogy. In order for derivatives to be linear, it's okay to just take the derivative of the first part and then add it to the derivative of the second part when two functions are added together. Also, if you have a constant multiplied, you can pull that constant out in front. These two pieces together are what it means for the derivative to be linear. Let's actually prove this. Suppose I had two functions that were added together. According to the definition definition of derivative using the limit as h goes to 0 definition. What I should do is I should take this quantity, plug in x plus h, and then take this quantity and just plug in x and subtract them. And here I can easily just do a little bit of algebra. Just separate the numerators, the f parts over h and the g parts over h. And you can see that they easily separate out using basic algebra. Now what about the constant rule? Again, using the definition of derivative, we take this thing and we plug in x plus h, and we take this thing and we just plug in x. Now using some algebra, we can factor c out in the numerator, and here's what we get. Now we can use the fact that limits are linear in order to pull this c out in front. And now the resulting expression is precisely the derivative of f of x. So here's the list of rules that we've established. Notice that we didn't say anything about derivatives being multiplicative. And we're going to find out in the next video how this really works. But for now, I just want you to know that derivatives do not multiply. This is one of the biggest mistakes that students will make all semester long. You really need to understand this point. When two functions are multiplied, Applied together, it is not correct to just take the derivative of the first and multiply times the derivative of the second. Don't do this. It's wrong, and you will lose points 
if you try to take derivatives like this. Similarly, when functions are divided, you cannot just take the derivative of the top and the bottom and divide them. Don't do it. Okay, let's do some examples. Because there's a plus sign, we can do the derivative of the first piece and then plus the derivative of the second piece. Remember, the derivative of a constant is zero. And here, we can pull that constant out in front. And here, we can use the power rule on the final line and then simplify our answer. Let's do another example. Here you can see we have two expressions that are multiplied together. Let me just do a little quiz. Is this valid? Can I just like take the derivative of the first piece and then multiply it times the derivative of the second piece? Of course not. Derivatives are not multiplicative. You can't just do the individual pieces here when these things are multiplied. Up above they were added so it was okay to just do the first piece and then add to the derivative of the second piece. When quantities are multiplied, you can't just break it down into pieces like that. So what do we do? Well, algebra, of course. Algebra is always our friend. Let's do some foiling. Now, after it's fully foiled out, we can take the derivative of each piece individual separating over plus and minus signs. For this piece here, don't forget that square root of x is the same thing as x to the one half power. There's another x here with a one power on it, and when I add those powers together, I get x to the three halves, right? This is all basic algebra that you should know when you came into this class. Okay, now I can take the derivative. The 2 just stays in front. That's the linearity rule for derivatives. And then we're using the power rule on x to the 3 halves power. Bring the 3 halves down in front and then subtract 1. 3 halves minus 1 gives us 1 half. Moving on to the next term. The 2 is multiplied, so it just gets copied down. And we can do the power rule on x. Remember, x is to the 1 power, and so the 1 comes down in front, and then we decrease the power by 1 to get x to the 0. Don't forget that x to the 0 is just 1, so it turns out that the derivative of x is just 1. That's a great thing to remember for future reference. Moving on, bringing the 1 half power down in front, and then doing 1 half minus 1 up in the exponent gives us a negative 1 half, and of course, the derivative of a constant is zero, so I don't have to write this last term. Now here, this is the answer, but it does look a little bit messy, and there's some very, very obvious simplifications that I can do, such as canceling the two and the two right here, and simplifying one times one. So our final answer in a bit of a cleaned up form looks like this. And don't forget that one half power means square root. Negative one half power means a square root in the denominator. So if you really wanna make it look a little bit nicer, you can write the final final answer like this. So I hope that you'll challenge yourself and go look for more problems in the book. Check out the homework online and we'll see you in class soon.